Hello. Okay. Hello. Hi. Thanks for sharing. I'm just inviting some more people on. And give it a minute before I get started. I don't want to um, start talking before they get on. I'm going to give it a little bit longer. Indeed, I'm just going to dive right in. Trying to give people time to get the notification that I'm on.
see. Hello all, how are you doing? Let me get started in a minute. Just waiting on to see if anybody else is coming on before I dive in. I want everybody to try to catch it from the beginning. Because today is going to be a good day with this. It's going to be more than one part of it. Something that the Lord wants me to, to teach on, to share with you guys. So I pray that it bless you today with this word. I'm just now having my coffee after all this time. <laughs> so, during this moment, let's worship God together. We got to give God honor and praise. We got to give him the glory. We got to lift him up. He has been mighty good to us. He has blessed us. He has brought us a mighty long way. He has kept us safe. He has healed our bodies. He has healed our families, our children. So just take time to worship the Lord wherever you at, wherever you're doing. I've been in worship all day today, all morning. Okay, well, I'm going to jump straight in. And hopefully others will jump on or watch the replay. So, Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We thank you for all that you are, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us, Lord God. We just thank you for forgiving us for our sins, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you that you have sent your son down to die for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the doors you are opening and the ones you have closed, Lord God. And, Father God, we just come to you as humble as we know how, Father God, and we lift you up, Lord God, bowing down to you, asking you to forgive us for our sins sins, Lord God. Once known and unknown, once we did um, did a purpose, Lord God, and once we did without realizing it, God. Lord, we just praise your holy name and we thank you. Decrease me as you increase yourself today, Lord God. Lord God, you have your way here on this live, Lord God. So, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord God. We glorify your name. We just lift you up today. We thank you for, Lord God, the breakthroughs. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the many deliverance, Lord God. I thank you for the deliverance that you have given me today, Lord God. We thank you for delivering our families, Lord God. We thank you for delivering our land, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. 
for all that you are going to do, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we just praise you, God. We praise you, God, for our life. We praise you, God, just for your grace, Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, for we don't even deserve anything that we get, Lord God, but you continue to be with us. You continue to have your hands on us, Lord God, so we just thank you. And I just pray, Lord God, you have your way today, Lord God, and you move how you want to move. You, uh, you, you shake things up the way that you see fit, Lord God, closing off all the airways away from any backlash, Lord God. We rebuking the backlash. We rebuking the retaliation, Lord God. We rebuke, rebuking the rebellion, Lord God. We rebuking, hallelujah, Lord God, the backstabbing right now in the name of Jesus. And we plead your blood over this life, plead your blood over everyone that's on now, and over everyone that's going to come in the future, Lord God, to watch the replay. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So, um, let me know if y'all can really hear me good. I'm not sure if the music is louder than my voice. I can't really tell. But I'm going to turn it down a little bit anyway, just to be on the safe side. But just let me know in the comments um, if you can hear me better than Kenza Music. Um, so, I'm just going to jump right in by first saying that today has been a wonderful day with me. I had an awesome time in the presence of the Lord this morning and this afternoon. The Lord has um, delivered me from some things. He has healed me. He has brought me through. You know, sometimes there are things that is going on with us that we have no idea. That is still there in our minds, in our hearts. And you know, when God reveals them, um, all we can do is just submit and repent for that. So, uh, you know, I had an awesome time in God today. There was a lot of things broken, not just all from me and my house, but I felt some things broken in the spirit. I know for a fact that this is a time for revival. I think, uh, thank you uh, for letting me know. Um, I know this is a time for revival. This is a time for us to be refreshed in the Lord. And that he has so many things that he wants to do. But of course, before he can take us any further, before we can go deeper in him, before we can start walking in the things that he had called us to do, we have to, of course, be healed, set free, and delivered. Because if we don't, whenever we do go out to other people trying to pray for them, trying to heal them, then we are only going to contaminate them. So he has to start with self first. We have to start with ourselves first and we have to allow him to come in and we have to allow him to restore us to to heal us to um, heal our broken hearts to to heal any unforgiveness to deliver us from these things and to um, keep us in a, in, a, in a certain mindset to keep us in a certain place um, whenever he's getting ready to move mighty in our life and put us on a certain level so I just thank God for that, and I just hope and pray that whoever um, was is doing this fast with me, whoever's doing this fast with me, that you also had a great um, time in the Lord today, um, doing your morning fast and doing your praying and just sitting still in His presence. Um, with that being said, um, today I am going to be teaching on some characteristics of a true prophet. Um, you know, and this right here, as the Lord explained to me, is not going to be uh, a teaching to see if whether or not you are called into the office of a prophet, um, as some of you are, some of you not. But this right here is going to be opening your eyes to other people so that you would not be deceived. Um, you know, like I said, this is a time for revival, for refreshing, renewing. But at this time here, there are also going to be a time for um, uh it's time for a lot of false prophets like never before rising up. Now, we already had some out here. We already had a lot of them speaking and doing things. But this right here is a time where it's at, it's at an all-time high. It's at an all-time high because of this pandemic that just went through. And you can see it. Now, I know last year God spoke to me and I went live. I did a video. Um, uh, well, I didn't go live, but I did a video on uh, God separating uh, the, the wheat from the tear. He was separating the real from the fake. I'm not sure if any of y'all seen the video. Some of you probably did. Most of you probably didn't. Um, but it's on my ministry page. And it was a video talking about separating the real from the fake. It, got, it was a come a, it was going to come a season when God was going to separate the real from the fake. And he gave me the book of, um, of Samuel uh, when it talked 
talked about Eli and Samuel, and he put me in a deeper revelation because we all know who Eli was. Um, he was a, a priest in the, in the temple. And we know who Samuel was. You know, Samuel was raised up up under um, Eli. And we know that Eli turned his head whenever his sons were, you know, doing all these sinful things. And so he showed me how there was a shift. And he showed me that how, you know, um, during this shift, he took away the old and replaced it with the new. He took away Eli and replaced Eli with Samuel. But it went, during this shift, it also shows the real from the fake. See, the real, sometimes the fake can look so real to people. But, but really, it's the ones that people look over. It's the ones that people put to the side or put behind us. The, the true worshipers, the ones that God has hidden, it's the real ones. It's the ones that he won't risen up for such a, such a time as this. So he gave me that. And he also told me that, um, you know, it's time for his people to arise. And because there was a great war that was coming and it was a great things that was coming. Now, I'm not saying he was necessarily talking about the coronavirus or anything like that. But he was letting me know, reminding me today as I was in his presence this morning, that he was talking about that during the pandemic, during the time this virus is moving around, that it was going to be a lot of people opening their mouths saying, oh, you know, uh, um, uh, do this or I said this or you know blah blah this and blah blah that and so it's going to be a lot of false people arising not to mention that most of the ones that was already up that had many followers that had a lot of people behind them um, they're, you're going to see just how close to God they really were or not you know it's, it's the time like this is, is separating the real from the fake it's separating the ones that you know for a fact was either close to God or had a real relationship with him or if they were just playing church okay so yes it's um separating the real from the fake so during this time with a lot of uh these these false prophets rising up way more than usual during this time, um, the, the Lord don't want nobody to be deceived. He don't want nobody to be deceived. Now, yes, you know, the Bible tells us that you will know them by their fruit. Hey, sis, um, Gabrielle, how you doing? Uh, the Bible tells us we will know them by their fruit. But the Lord spoke something to me. He said, what if they are showing something of the fruit? Then how will you be able to tell the real from the fake? I'm going to let y'all, you know what I'm saying, put that in your spirit. If they are showing some of the fruit, some of the fruit, you know, how would you be able to tell the real from the fake? How will you know who is God's true prophet and who is somebody that's being being false? You know, because it's because people can pretend to love you. People can pretend to, to, to have self-control over their sin and over their flesh. People can pretend, you know, to be happy for you or to be happy in their life when really behind closed doors they're miserable and they're hateful. So if a person can pretend, you know, to do these things, then what are some other ways that you can tell whether or not these people are the true? true prophets of God or whether or not they are um or they are fake. So, you know, he told me that we have to also um, not just look at the fruit, but to also look at the characteristics and to also look at their lifestyle, you know, to look at their lifestyle because a way a person carry their lifestyles every single day, hi apostle, the way a person Go about their lifestyle every single day, the way they treat people, the way they are behind closed doors, you know, the way they are when they're not around other people, you know, they're interrogate, 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 you know, trying to say you guys, my tongue is tied up, but, um, you know, the way they carry themselves and also their, you know, just their characteristics. Like I said, a person can say they are. They can say that, you know, they can they can pretend they have joy. They can pretend they have love for you. They can pretend they have self-control over their flesh and over the temptations and their and their fleshy desires. But, you know, pretending is one thing, but acting out your lifestyle is a different thing. So, you know, uh, uh, being able to be able to not just look at the fruit, but to, to uh, look at the characteristics of the different things of a prophet. Now, with that being said... Uh, prophets, even the ones that's in the Bible, if you read your Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, whenever the prophets speak, they were hated. They were hated because when they spoke, they spoke warnings. When they when they came, they rebuked. They tore down. They overthrow. They tear up the kingdom of of um, of the enemy. They tear up the kingdom of darkness and they build up the kingdom of God. So a lot of times when prophets come, you don't want to see them come. My Wi-Fi going outside.
Sorry, guys. But you got so many prophets that are love. They are. They are, they are like famous. You know what I'm saying? They got so many followers, and they and they are loved on now. I'm not gonna say that there aren't anybody out here that um. You know, there's no prophets that ain't going to have no followers. And it's, I'm not going to say there's no good prophets that don't have, you know, followers. And the reason why I say that is because, okay, you got the prophets that are called to a nation. Okay, if they're called to the nation, then, yeah, they're going to have a lot of people that know them. And they're going to have a lot of people that, that, uh, that follow them because they are called to the nation, which means that they move around. They prophesy to the nation. And, you know, but even then... Most of them, you only see them come out and speak every once in a while. You know, you got uh, Lana Bowser. I like her. I love her. She's a true woman of God. And you know what I'm saying? She's very anointed. And But even her, you know what I'm saying? She comes out every once in a while. And when she comes, she comes and speaks the truth and the mind of God. And then she's gone. Because prophets not going to speak 24 hours a day. We're not going to always come with a great word for you. You know, we come. We come because God sent us for a reason. Because everything else, every other woman or every other thing that he sent to you, you uh, you know what I'm saying, you 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 ignored it. So he okay, he's like, okay, since you ignored me, I'm finna send my prophet to warn you. I'm finna send my prophet so I can use them to rebuke you or convict you in love because you're not listening, you're not getting it. So um, you know, and on top of that, the ones that so-called want to be a prophet, you know, I say to them that please be be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for because uh, being a prophet, you have to go through so much of the stripping. You have to go through so much of the crushing. You know, God has to take you through so much uh, to make sure you remain humble. And then, of course, depending on what he has anointed you for, you have to go through that. Like if he anointed you for healing and deliverance, then you're going to spend a lot of your life going through sickness, whether it's mental issues, whether it's something physically wrong with your body, whether it's a heart problem, whether it's lung problem, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, obesity problem, whether it's a broken heart, whatever it is, you go through a lot of that because God has to take you through the process in order for you to come out stronger. And once you conquer that thing and you become anointed for it, then he can use you to help somebody else. Then he can use you to be able to tell your testimony to bring somebody else out. So being a prophet is not all sunshine. You know, we have to always, we come to warn, we come to rebuke, we come to tear down the kingdom of darkness, and we come to uplift the kingdom of God, but we also, also go through so much. Now I'm going to read Ezekiel. I'm going to read Ezekiel 2, 2 and 3. Bless and sis, how are you doing? Now I'm going to read Ezekiel 2 and 3. Now oh, it's cool, it's fine. So, Ezekiel 2 and 3 said, um, well, this is not necessarily Ezekiel 2 or 3. Well, it is, but it's like more of an introduction. And I like the way they said because um, it, it kind of, you know what I'm saying, is what I'm basically just telling you about prophets and what we go through. It says, be careful what you wish for, you may get it. It is certainly true that in many cases, people desire for a prophet. A, uh, it's, it's certainly the case that many desire to be a prophet. A true prophet of God that is, many people claim the title of a prophet who, uh, who is a large following, who has a large following because they promote a message that people want to hear. Now, see, I just said that. That's a, that's a key. There are so many people out here that want to be a prophet, but there's also a lot of them out here that, that claim to be a prophet as false, and they have a lot of following because they promote messages that people want to hear. They're telling you what you want to hear. They're tickling the ear because you have itching ears, and they're tickling it, telling you what you want to hear, but at the same time, you know, telling you what you hear is not going to get your soul saved. It's not going to free you or deliver you. And it's a... Uh, True prophets of God come only in times of extreme spiritual distress and generally as God's last resort. After people have rejected all other forms of his word, once you truly understand the mission and call of a prophet, you would never wish to see one. It would mean that you are in so much trouble that it may be too late. Now, once again, like I just said, distinguishing the real from the fake.
Yes, there are times where prophets are going to get a word of knowledge. Yes, there are times when prophets are going to get a, give you a word of wisdom. But in that word of wisdom and in that word of knowledge and, and even in telling you what God said about something that's good in your life, whether it's a blessing or a miracle, there's going to be some type of rebuking. There's going to be some type of, of correction. There's going to be some type of warning because, you know, if a person know that, you know what I'm saying, they, you, okay, for instance, and I was just telling somebody else this too. Great example. If a person know for a fact that they have not been true to themselves, to God, if they know they have been secretly doing some type of sin, if they know they have unforgiveness, if they know they have all these things going on, whether it's pride, whether it's you know uh, sexual immorality, immorality, whatever it is, and you got somebody come to tell you, oh, God going to do this and everything is great and you don't have to worry, then you need to check that. You need to check that. I'm going to tell you the reason why. If you know for a fact that, hey, you've been going through a lot of stuff and you have been disobedient and you have been very sinful, do you honestly believe that you can move to the next level without repenting? Do you honestly believe that you can move to the next level or, re or move higher in God without changing your ways, without renewing your thinking, without forgiving, without, you know what I'm saying, true repentance? You got to think about that. Without healing, without getting rid of the past, you got to think about that. So a lot of times you have people of they're claiming to be prophets come to you and they come to you and they tell you what you want to hear. They have so many followers because people love to hear a good word. People love to hear, hey, you know, you're going to get a car next week or, or I see you got $10,000 coming and all you got to do is sow a seed of this and come on now, let's be real with each other. Even that by itself. Always asking for a C, and I'm finna crush that right now, and I know that, you know, I already don't have a lot of people watching me anyway, so it really don't matter to me, because I'm just going to speak the truth of God, but even that in itself is, is wrong, and I'm going to tell you the reason why, because first of all, when God was talking about sowing a C, he wasn't even talking about money, he was talking about his word, he said that when you sow a C, meaning when you speak his word, you're going to have some people that's not going to hear, you're going to have some people that's going to hear, and it's going to go out one, come in one ear and go out the next ear and you're going to have some people that's going to hear and they're going to put it in their spirit. That's what he meant about sowing the seed. Not to mention that the Bible says that God's word is free. His prophecy is free. So why are you asking for seeds and why are you asking for money? You are wrong and you know you're wrong and those type of people need to repent unto the Lord. I wouldn't dare ask nobody for no money. And I wouldn't dare tell you that, oh I got a word for you. God got me a word for you but you have to sow a seed. You have to give me money. I'm not even going to put my cash app up. The last time I put my cash app up, it wasn't even for me. It was asking, it was letting y'all know that I had a cash app for the ministry where I was going to be putting my own money in there for the ministry. So if anybody needs some help, if anybody is struggling, then me being who I am, I'm going to take, out, take that money and I'm going to give it to you if I can. So... We have to be careful. We have to look at it. We have to look at it. Yes, the word may be good. Yes, they may be prophesying good. But we have to look at it. Are they real? Because the Bible even tells us in Jeremiah 14, 14, and I'm going to read it here. It says, the Lord... The, then the Lord said unto them, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesied unto you false vision and divination, and a thing not to the seat of their heart. But then if you go down a little further from that, I'll tell you this. You got to be careful. You got to be very careful and discern. Uh... It said, therefore thus said the Lord, concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Ye, they say, sword and famous should not be in this land, and sword and famous should those, those prophets consume. That's another key thing. People saying, oh, the wrath of God is not coming. The wrath of God, who? Okay, well, if you, if you don't think the wrath of God is coming in, I don't know what to tell you. It's in the, it's, look what's going on in this world. And you refer it back to the Bible. Look at what's going on in the world and refer it back to the Bible. You put two and two together. And a friend girl of mine, and uh, being a friend girl of mine, was just talking about the seven seals. If you go and read the seven seals, and I might read it to y'all before I go off, before I get off of here. If you go and read the seven seals, you will see. We have seven seals followed by seven trumpets. So if you read the seven seals, sorry, my friend. I hope y'all guys are still here. If you're still here with me, let me know. Type of comment if you're still here. My connection went out. 
The devil is a lie. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. My Wi Fi is perfectly fine. I don't know why my uh, connection went out. So if you still here with me, please let me know. Type a comment. Let me know you're still here. If you're still here, let me know. I'm just going to wait before I finish. Okay, you're here. Good, good. Let me know. Let me know, guys, if you're still here. How my connection went out. Because I really want y'all to hear this. Like I said, a lot of people not going to want to listen. I don't really get that many views, no way. So it really don't matter. But hey, as long as somebody can hear it and understand it and God get the glory, then I am excited with that. Okay, great. Great. Everybody's still here. Good. Thank you. So, and it says, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. Read that again. I really hope y'all catch this. If you're still here with me, I really hope because I'm, I'm really hoping that y'all can understand. I'm trying to help y'all in this season because this is a season where so many people are going to be rising up, um, claiming to be prophets, and they're not. And it's going to be so many deceived. And the reason why, I'm going to tell y'all a little later, the reason why so many are going to be deceived. And I said it before that it's not that people can pretend, um, can fake the fruit of the spirit. But you got to look at their lifestyle and their character. Okay, okay, so it says Jeremiah 14, 16, and the people to whom they prophesy should be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, meaning that, okay, the false prophets, the people that lied, the people that went against God's word, the people that deceived many, they're going to um, have to... They're going to have what's coming to them. God's going to get them. He's going to bring wrath upon them. But the problem is for the ones who listen, the ones who listen to them and took heed to their words, they're also going down. So if the, if the false prophets go down, guess what? You're going down with them too. So, you know, we have to be careful when we listen to these people. We have to check them. Okay, I said all the time there have been some people that I have got on their life and I have listened to them and they can prophesy and they speak a good word. And I'm like, oh, I like the way they teach. You know, Lord, I'd be glad when you put me on that level when I can teach the way they teach. And then he like, daughter, but look at them. He said, look at them. There's always going to be something that they're going to do that's going to show you that they're going against the word of God. And so here's my thing. All prophets come from God. Only God can give the gift. So if they are a prophetic, if they, are, if they can prophesy, if they are a prophet, then yes, their gift did come from the Lord. But here's the difference between a false prophet and a real prophet. A false prophet is all about who their source is. Where are they getting their information? Are they prophesying? lies? Are they doing things that goes against the Bible? Are they living a great lifestyle? That is what a, uh, that's the difference because a false prophet gets their get their sort get their information illegally. The devil gets their information illegally, meaning that they illegally tap into the spirit realm. That's why psychics are the way that they are. That's why a psychic is hooked up to witchcraft because a psychic is a, a person that was prophetic and they decide to illegally tap in and and start speaking on things that God told them not to speak on. If God didn't tell a prophet to open their mouth, then they should not be opening their mouth. Period. But if a person is illegally tapping into the spirit realm and they're, you know what I'm saying, illegally tapping into your life and they're trying to see what you got going on, then they are being false because God didn't tell them to do that. Because God didn't tell them to do that. And besides, you shouldn't even want nobody to illegally tap into your life because you got to understand some of the things that they have to do in order to see your future or in order to see what you're going through. They have to use witchcraft and you have opened and if you if a person is using witchcraft to illegally tap into your life to give you a prophecy, then you have opened up that door for witchcraft in your own life. And now here you are fighting warfare and, and you're going through all these different things and having these hard times and you're like, where did this come from? It's because you have allowed that door to be open just by allowing these people to prophesy in your life. And they were doing it illegally. I don't know why I just went there, but thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. So it tells you in Jeremiah 14, 16, after he talked about the false prophets and, and how they're prophesying lies, it said, and the people to whom they prophesy, meaning that the ones that received the prophetic word shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the fame of, and the sword. Okay, I'm going to read another translation. I think it's the Passion translation that I like the most um, when it comes to this right here. And I'm going to read it in that translation. 
And let's see. Okay, so I'm trying to see, guys. My thing is acting up badly today. That's that's why I say I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. Let's see which one is it. So give me one second, guys. So I'm gonna try to get this for you. Here it goes. It's the message, not the. Uh, it was the message, not the passion. So once again. So this is my verdict on them. All the preachers who preach using my name as their text, preachers uh, who use my name as their text, preachers I have never seen in the first place, preachers who say war and famine will never come, these preachers will die in war and by starvation. And the people to whom they've been preaching to will end up as a corpse. Will end up as a corpse. So we have to be careful because I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to, wherever they got going on, I don't want to be a part of that. So we have to be careful. And so, like I said, you see so many that, um, like I said, God said his word is free. Okay. His prophecies are free. His oil is free. The oil comes from the anointed. You know, when a person is anointed and they and, and God wants to use them to uh, bring somebody else out to lay hands on them, you know, the anointing flow from one person to the next. You got people out here trying to make you buy uh, prayer cloths. They trying to make you uh, sow a seed for a prophetic word or I see healing in your future, but you know, if you sow a seed and this, this going to happen and that going to happen and you know, uh, won't you go and buy this and after my website and want you go and do this and and if you pay you know that's crazy come on you guys that goes completely against the word of god completely against the word of god so like i said false doesn't necessarily mean that oh they uh they are not a prophet isn't that because no god gives everybody a gift what you do with that gift and how you use it is going to consider whether or not you are a real person of god or if you are uh or if you false it's all about your source who is your source who is your source? Who is you allowing to operate through you? Are you allowing God to operate through you? Or are you allowing the enemy to operate through you? Because whoever you are allowing to dwell in you, whoever you are allowing to puppet you around, that's you know, they're going to let you know whether or not you're real or fake. We are, temp we are temples. Don't you know that this body is a temple? We are a gateways. We are a porter. We are a porter. We are a porter. We are a gateway. That's why I always tell God, if there's any, if I open up the wrong gateway, if I open up the wrong porter, then I close it off and I seal it with the blood of Jesus. Because I don't want to open that gateway for somebody. We are the gateway. Our bodies, our, these are our houses. It's flesh to us, but in the spirit realm, this is a house. This is a gateway. This is a portal. And it's a way for people, for either the enemy or for the Holy Spirit to descend and us seeing in and out. Whenever they want to operate, they have to have a body. So it's all it's up to you. Who do you want to control your body? Who do you want to control the words that come out of your mouth? Is it going to be our Father God or is it going to be the enemy? And whoever you choose, that distinguishes you between the real and the fake. So, we're going to get into some of the characteristics. Because like I said, people can pretend to love. People can pretend to have self-control over there. And I'm speaking on the fruit. Okay, we know the fruit is love. We know the fruit is uh is uh self-control we know the fruit is um long suffering we know the fruit is joy we know that but come on now people can pretend to be happy people can pretend to love you people can pretend you know what i'm saying uh to have self-control over themselves and to have self-control over um over their uh over their flesh okay people can pretend that very well so here goes some of the characteristics because when you have to put the fruit of the holy spirit with the characteristics and with the lifestyle okay so it tells you right here it says that um i'm gonna start i'm gonna give you something give you a lot okay today like this is gonna be part one though because it's so much you guys so much so i'm just gonna give you part one for right now Okay, and um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all off into you know in this. It's gonna be like a little mini series we're gonna do. So I hope you guys stick with me because I'm gonna go all off into the difference between foretelling and foretelling. There's a big difference. I'm gonna go through the difference of uh, the office of a prophet, the spirit of a prophet, and the gift. You know, there's the there people. Are, there's there's difference. There's a difference. And I had somebody to say. My friend girl said, I don't know if y'all seen her live. I put. 
in my uh in the group i put in the group and it and she was talking about where's all the teachers and where's all the pastors now everybody these days want to be prophets and prophetess okay where's the rest on where they here they here pretending to be prophets that's where they at. A lot of these people that's prophesying, they are really teachers and they're really pastors and they're really anointed for something totally different. But because they can work out of the gift of a prophecy, they're, you know what? I'm not even going to get into that, y'all, because it's going to be a whole nother teaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. So, the first thing is this. A prophet, a true prophet, we are true worshipers. We are true worshipers. I can worship 24 hours a day. I don't care where I am. I love to worship because worship is a war cry. We love to worship. We love to lift up God. Why? Because prophets, true prophets, we love to be in the presence of the, of the Lord. We love to be in the presence of God. We like the way we feel when, when we are around him. We love to magnify his name. We love to, to, to look up to him. Okay, so the first thing is that prophets are worshipers. They are true worshipers. Means that they glorify him. They they uh, they are honor him. They esteem him. They exalt him. We love to exalt the Lord. You know. Okay. And it tells us right here in Judges chapter five, one through five, and it's uh, the song of Deborah. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abraham, sang this song. When the princes of Israel in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, your kings. Listen, you rulers. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing. I will make music to the Lord and God of Israel. O oh Lord, when you want out of when you when you went out of uh went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook and the heavens poured and the clouds poured down. The mountains quaked before the Lord, O one in Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. I love that. I love that because it, it's like she was, she was singing a song, but... It's almost like she was singing, but she was worshiping. And that's how I am. I cannot sing a tune. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I write. I write music. I make beats, but I can't sing a tune for nothing. But I guarantee you this, that I will sing my heart out in worship. And when I'm singing that to God, I'm not caring about how I sound because the words are not coming from, they're not coming just from, from flesh. They're coming from my heart. I can make up a song. That's why I say I write so good because when I'm in the holy, when I'm in the presence of God, when I'm in the Holy Spirit, uh, and He's taking, you know, taking me up in the spirit realm, I just start freestyling words out my mouth, and it's coming from my heart. It's basically the way I feel on the inside. So we are true worshipers, and we exalt God and we lift Him up. Okay, we lift Him up. The second thing is intercessors. We're intercessor. Now, what is intercessor? An uh, intercessor is a mediator, one who interposes between parties of uh, variance with a view to reconcile them and one please on um, and one please in the behalf of another. We are intercessors. We are intercessors, and I love to intercede for people. I may not tell people, but a lot of times when I see things on Facebook, whether I tell you guys or not, a lot of times whether it's somebody, I, I don't care if I don't know them, we, we mourn for people. And when we, it, that's what makes us great worship. I mean, great intercessors because we mourn for people. So, in other words, we uh we like to to like we get on our knees and we beg God, can you please, please like. Can you please turn their heart? Can you please help them with their bill? Can you please heal them, Lord? There have been times where, and this is from the heart. This is not me being arrogant. No, this is just an example. There have been plenty of times where I don't care what I'm going through. And if I see somebody going through something, I could be in a worse position than them. But if I see you going through something, God, please give my blessing to them. I don't even want it. I don't even care. If they need the money, let them have the money. If it's my blessing, take my blessing and give it to them. Let them be saved, God. Take my healing and give it to them, please, God. I don't even want it. I just want to see them saved. I just want to see them have salvation. I want to see them eat. I want to see their rent paid. I want to see their light be paid. You know what I'm saying? That's how we are. We are true intercessors, and we work for the behavior of people. If we see somebody going through something, we don't care. You could be the best prayer warrior in the, in the world. We still feel like it's our nature to war for you. We will fight for you in the spirit. 
Sure, we were fighting you in the natural. We don't care. You know, that's how I was, you know, in, in my natural days. I, I have people, they can tell you, they can vouch for me that even in my natural days when I was out of my sin, you know, um, uh, if, if somebody messed with somebody, oh, I'm stepping in. I don't care how good my friend can fight. You're not touching her. And that's how we are in the spirit. We love to intercede for people. We love to war for people, okay? So we are true worshipers and we are true intercessors. Okay, the third one. Oh, let me give y'all this too. I want to read this to y'all before I go down to the third one. And it's coming from Timothy. Okay. Uh, first, no, I'm sorry. Coming from, uh, from Kings. First Kings 13 and 6. Then the king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with the Lord and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. Now that lets you know right there that not only do we intercede, but because we intercede with such passion and because we intercede with so much humility towards the Lord and we know who God is, then God God answers on our behalf. He will answer on our behalf. Okay, so that was first Kings 13 to 6. If you want to go back and read it. I also like Habakkuk 2. With so many scriptures on interceding, but I like Habakkuk 2, 2 and 1. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am going and what answer I am to give to this complaint. See, that's another thing. We stand and we watch. We don't just intercede, but we're waiting to intercede for something. We're waiting. We love it. We love to hear from God. Like I sit around all the time just waiting for God to say, okay, go pray for this person or go pray for the nation or, or decree this thing in the atmosphere. We love that. Okay. It's in our hearts. It's in our nature. So the third thing is meekness. Meekness. Okay. And Jesus can be our perfect example of meekness. You know, it's gentle. It's being submissive. It's being humble. Okay. Think about uh, of how Jesus washed the disciples' feet. You know, he was he was showing himself that no matter who he is, he still know how to be a servant. He knows how to be humble. He knows he knew how to be so you know what I'm saying submissive to the Father. So uh, meekness is all about being submissive and humble, and we are so humble. We are so humble. I had people tell me before you're too humble. You know what I'm saying? But we are gentle. We are easy with people. We are humble and we submissive. We love to submit. Okay, uh, and I, I, I'm going to give you some, some more things on this because, like I said, uh, this right here, I love this part. I love the meekness part, and I say this because it's going to help you when it comes to the uh, thinking about the, the real from the faith. Okay, we, you got so many people out here that love the spotlight. They love the spotlight. They don't care. They, they love the spotlight. They'll go out and do things like that. But when it comes to a true prophet, believe it or not, we are shy. We are bold. We are bold when it comes to speaking the word of God. We are bold when it comes to taking up for others and interceding. We are. We ain't, I don't say we're not bold, but we are so shy. We have so much shyness. It is hard to get us to do anything when it comes to being in front of other people because we are shy. We are shy. We are self um, effacement. We have modesty, you know what I'm saying? We are very intimate with Christ. We are very intimate with other people. Like I tell people all the time, hey, baby, hey, boo, I love you. Can I love on you? Can I hug you? Can I kiss on you? We love that. We are very uh, intimate, and we have so much humble, and we are very shy, okay? So that's another thing um, that we have to look for, too, when it comes to, to being uh, you know, when we looking at these prophets and be trying to be able to tell whether or not, you know, if they are really of God or not. So, um, I'm trying to see. Yeah, we have the same mindset of Christ. Um, and you know, we, we love to, like I said, once again, we love to exalt him. We love to, um, um, we love to be the ones to bring the very true nature of God. Okay. We love that. Um, and it breaks our hearts. Like when people like don't, when people go against God or uh, people say they don't believe in God, um, it makes us one second guys, my baby. <laughs> He wants to come get on live for me, guys. So funny. So, yes. Um, uh, what was that? Oh, yeah. So, uh, 
how long guys let me get back to where I was let me see because I think I clicked something okay so yeah um Guys, I forgot where I was. Oh, Holy Spirit, bring back to my memory. <laughs> bring back to my attention. Um, but yeah, uh, we love to exalt. Like I said, we love to exalt God. We love to, uh, how long? Bring his nature. I'm trying to see what this thing was, guys. I'm so sorry. Just wait. I think I clicked something when, uh, these are my notes. And I think I clicked something when I got up, but it's okay. So, but yeah, uh, like I said, we love to we love to exalt God. We love to. Um, um, oh yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, He always brings back to your memory. But what I was saying was that when people go against God, or if they say they don't believe in God, or if they, you know, what I'm saying I don't know, I break down and cry. I'm sorry because we we like we love God so much and we want everybody else to know God and love God and we love to exalt who he is and we're just like if only you knew you would say what you say if only you can feel what I feel if only you can see what I see you want to think like that so it kind of hurts us and it crushes us whenever people talk like that you know because we are we are Oh, sorry, we are so close to God, and we we love to exalt Him, and we love to uh, to have His name above all names, and we're just like, oh my gosh, just come on, just let me love you, and let God love you, and let me see this. So you know, it kind of it kind of hurts us a little bit when um, when that happens because you know we just we we cry a lot. I'm sorry, prophets, true prophets, we cry a lot. Like uh, we are so freaking sensitive, you guys. We are. We cry over everything when it comes to to different things, and not just spirit, but even in the natural. We cry so much, and everything gets to us, and that's mainly because, believe it or not, prophets walk in the spirit 24 hours a day. Prophets walk in the spirit 24 hours a day. And I'm not saying oh, we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. No, I'm saying that we can we are so sensitive to the spirit realm. We are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and we are sensitive to the spirit realm. So we feel everything. Okay, so that's another one. Okay, we know the word of God, therefore we know God. We know the word of God, therefore we know God. And I'm just going to pause right here because this morning I went live and I was talking about how, um, what God wanted to do for today and the reason why I didn't put any prayer points because he wanted to um, teach us, he wanted to heal us, he wanted to deliver us, he wanted us to spend time in his presence and he wanted us to just um, learn different things, you know, and he wanted to teach us how to go deeper with our discernment. And how to be able to see his signs because God is always giving us a sign. So like I said, I can look at a tree and I can see a sign in the tree. I can see a sign in the clouds. I can look at the wall and there will literally be a face staring back at me at the wall. Okay. Um, I can look at uh, the floor and I will see things in the floor. So we're always in the spirit and my, our discernment is always there. But at the same time, another thing God wants us to do is to, to uh, meditate on the word. And I'm not talking about meditating on the word as far as opening the Bible, meditate on the word. He wants us to meditate on the word in our spirit. He's trying to teach us how to be able to pull those scriptures up in our spirit for the time that we need it. Okay, so in other words, when we read the scripture, and this goes for me too, because that's the way our bodies work sometimes. When you're reading the word, when you have your Bible, okay. And you're reading, let's be real with ourselves. We're not going to remember every little single thing that we read at the word because, you know, um, we, we have our busy lives. We got our families to deal with, our jobs, our, our personal things going on, our relationships. And we have, uh, you know, what I'm saying we have like our, our children. We have so many things going on. Our minds are always racing. So, of course, when we read it, let's be real. Our carnal mind is not going to remember every little single thing that we read. But the Holy Spirit remembers everything, okay? Okay, so what that means is that whenever I read the Bible, I always ask the Holy Spirit coming to me and read the word with me and uh, put it in my in my mind and to also ask the Holy Spirit to bring me revelation. Okay, I ask the Holy Spirit to bring me revelation because I want to be able to go deeper in the word of God. But with that being said, uh, when I say that, uh, whenever I'm going about my day. Or whenever I'm going through something, or whenever something is happening, 
then the Holy Spirit will bring certain scriptures back to my memory. So in my carnal mind, my flesh won't remember it, but the Holy Ghost on the inside of me remembers everything, okay? So therefore, whenever I'm going through something, whenever I feel like I'm about to fall apart or, or you know, I need the Lord, then the Holy Spirit will bring certain scriptures back to my memory for me to meditate on. So that's another reason why God wanted you to, like, get in that secret place uh, and to get to yourself and I explained earlier that the secret place don't necessarily mean locking yourself up in a closet or a room. You know, being deep off into the spirit realm is like a secret place. You know, it's almost like... um it's almost like when Jesus was out in the wilderness, yes, we know he was being tempted, but he was also based in that secret place, too, because he was so, you know what I'm saying, in tune with, with the Lord, with the Father, you know, and that's how he was able to stand up into the enemy and the temptation. So, you know, when, when you're out walking, or when you're, yeah, I'm going to say walking because I like to walk. If you're out walking and you're like, you know what I'm saying, in God's presence, you can feel him all around. I'm talking about when I do it, I can feel him in the wind. I can feel him in the trees. I can feel him on the ground up under my feet. So when I'm out walking in the spirit and in the presence of God, I can feel him all the way around me, literally. So what he wanted to teach us today it's for us to learn how to dig deep into our spirits and learn how to tap into our spirits to be able to bring those scriptures to mind whenever we need it. Because there's going to be a time, you guys, where we're not going to have these Bibles. It tells us in his word that there's going to be a time where these Bibles are going to be stripped from us. And that's why he said, hide the word into your heart. Okay, and what that means is that read the word, study the word every day. But when you're doing it, allow the Holy Spirit to be with you because the Holy Spirit is going to remember when you can't. So even if the Bible gets taken from you, you would know how to tap deep into the spirit and you would know how to, to bring those scriptures to mind in order to use them for the right time. Okay, so number four, we know the word of God, so therefore we know the God because God is the word, okay? It tells us in first John John uh first I mean we tell us in John 1 1, okay, that God is the word. So if you know your word, then you know who God is. Okay, so that's another reason why it's best to study the word. We love to read the word because we love to know who God is. You know we love to learn about him. We love to study him. We love to learn how we can get closer to him and things like that. So, and the definition for this say we have in the mind, we know we have in the mind, we have learned and be able to recall we, uh, and be able to be aware of. See, there it go. We're able to be recalled. We're able to recall it and we're able to be aware of. We're able to recall the word and we're able to be aware of the word because we know the word, which means we know God. So it's in our spirit. The word is in our spirit because we, we have God in our spirit and we, and we can learn how to meditate on the word so we can learn how to bring those scriptures so we can learn how to, to, um, to be close with God because when you know the word and you basically know the mind of God. Okay, so we know we know the word of God. Now, number five. It say forgiven. We are very we love we we love. Oh my gosh, we love forgive. We we have a very repentive heart. We I'm talking about we re, I think sometimes we repent just to be repentant. I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm not saying that we don't never have anything to repent for, but there are times where I would just cry out, Lord, forgive me. Like, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I'm just making sure that there is nothing I have done that went against God. So I'm like, please forgive me, God. Please forgive me. I repent. We have a very repentant heart, but we also like to forgive other people, and we also want other people to be forgiven. So there, we cry out for people, okay? Uh, and there goes back to to uh the intercession part okay and i'm it says it right here that numbers 12 13 moses cried out to the lord oh god please heal her okay so that goes back to having an intercessory part of us okay we love for people to be forgiven we love to forgive but we also love for god to forgive us so okay so we just love forgiving all the way around okay and it says um try to see okay yeah so that was uh tell y'all again the scripture so you can get it that was numbers 12 13 okay numbers 12 13 and of course there's more in numbers um actually the whole book of numbers 12 the whole scripture i mean of numbers 12 is a good read um about forgiving and how moses cried out okay to god now number six we are filled with the holy spirit 
Okay, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And there, once again, there we go, being able to tell the difference between a real prophet and a fake prophet. Remember, I was just saying that it's all about the source. It's all about who we are allowed to dwell on the inside of us, okay? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you? Or is you allowing Satan to dwell on the inside of you? Because there's a difference. Now, the, the gift of prophecy, being able to see it to the Spirit, where, yes, that's a gift that God gave from birth, okay? He tells us in Jeremiah, okay? Okay, that the gift is given even before you formed in your mama's womb. So he gave you the gift, but how you use that gift or who you allow to operate through you is what caused you to be either real or fake, okay? Because if you're going against the word of God, then you're fake, okay? You're false. God did not send you, okay? So it said the definition, filled, occupied, completely spread over and through, pervade, take over, okay? So... It tells you right here that the definition of being um, a filled with something is to occupy completely, okay? Is it the Holy Spirit that's occupying you or is it the enemy that's occupying you, okay? Spread over or through, pervade or take over. Who is you allowing to take over? Or I'm not going to say you, but who do you think is allowing the, to, who do, who is allowing, who are they allowing to take over them? My tongue is twisted today. Who are they allowing to take over them? Okay. So that's another thing you have to look at too. Who are they allowing to take over them? Okay. So we have to be careful with that once again. Okay. Because we can look at people all day long on live show. You can look at them in person, but you have to be able to very, uh, be able to discern very good who is operating out of them. Okay. You have to be able to discern very good who is operating out of them. Because you do not want to be deceived. You know, like I said, um, it tells us that in the last days, the very uh, elite is going to be deceived. How are they going to be deceived? How are they? Because they're not, they're not looking at all this. They're not looking at the characteristics. They're not looking at the fruit. And they're not looking at the source that these people are operating out of. Okay? Meaning that they're not looking at the lifestyle either. Okay? So, if, you're, if you don't know all this information, if you're not looking at these things and you're not discerning these things, then you're going to be the very elite that's going to fall into destruction with these people. Like I said, I just read Jeremiah 14 and 16 to you that um, the ones who listen is going to fall at, uh, to the wayside just like the rest of them, okay? So, um, it tells us uh, uh, John 6 John chapter 6 and 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life, okay? The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Okay. The words that come from the Lord gives life. Okay. They exalt. They comfort you. They, they uh, exhort you. You know, they bring you life. They, 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 they bring fresh wind into you. Okay. They speak to your spirit in a certain way. Okay. So. It's that First Corinthians two fourteen. The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, First Corinthians two fourteen. And also like uh, John 16 and 7. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going. Uh, yeah, going away unless I go away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. I love that, okay? Um, about the Holy Spirit. It, it, it just, it does something to me. He was talking to me about Pentecostal um, the other day. And um, he was talking about coming back to the cross and gathering up, you know. And he was telling me, showing me things about how the apostle was gathering up together and um, waiting on him for the Holy Spirit to come back, okay, and take a residence in him. So, number seven. Fearlessness. I'm almost finished, you guys. I ain't gonna hold you too long. So, uh, but I want to give y'all this because, like I said, it's so much more, and I'm gonna do different parts too if you stick with me throughout this mini series because it's good. It's gonna help you, especially in the last days. So, fearlessness. He or she fears God and not man. Okay. There's another thing. We fear God, but we don't fear man. Like I said, we are shy, but we are bold. Okay. We are courageous and we are brave, but we do not fear man. 
but we fear God, okay? I fear God. There are times when I'm by myself, and if I even feel like I'm about to think the wrong thing, or there are certain things, certain habits that I broke because I was scared of God, okay? I'm not even going to lie to you. There are certain habits that people never knew I had because they were done behind closed doors that I broke because I was scared of God. I wasn't scared of man. I wasn't even scared of man finding out, but I was scared of God. So people, uh, a true prophet, they are, they are scared of God. They are scared of what God going to say. They're scared of God's wrath, you know, and not just that, but we are scared of breaking God's heart. Okay, that's the number one thing because I don't want people to be like, oh, you're only being good because you were scared of God's wrath. No, I'm saying that we also are scared to break God's heart. Like, I don't want to break God's heart, okay? I, I be looking like, okay, I can't break your heart because you have done so much for me. You have died on, you know, you sent your, your son Jesus to die on a cross for me, and you have saved me, and you have brought me out of my, uh, um, you have brought me out of my sinful way and you spare my life there are so many times where I could have I should have been dead there are so many times where I was stupid and I done some very stupid things and I should have been dead but God saved me so it's not so much oh I fear his wrath and this and that no we 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 fear of breaking his heart we don't want to do that we don't want to break his heart okay we don't want to turn our backs on him because we know he has done so much for us and we know the love he has for us so we fear God but we don't fear Man, okay, we fear God because we know that we are held accountable. Because I'm telling you, my service has never acted up like this, okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, but we fear we don't want to break his heart. We we know that we are, are we are held accountable for a lot of things, and we know that we have souls that are tied to our destiny. We know that people's blood will be on our hands if we don't do what God called us to do. So you know we fear God, and but we don't fear man. Okay, like I said, we're courageous, we are brave, we are uh, we are fearless, um, we are unafraid. You know, we are daring. I've done a lot of crazy daring things in my life, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. So I know better now. I know better to, for the difference between being uh, daring in your flesh than being daring in your spirit. Because being daring in your flesh is so much more different. Because I have uh, done a lot of crazy things for being so daring. Um, we just, it's the rush. Okay, so. Uh, 2 Kings 3, 14 and 15. And Alicia said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jeho Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you or even notice you. 15. But now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. Okay, so it's all about having respect too. We respect him. We don't we respect who he are. We know who God is, okay? And we um uh, and we we re we respect his presence and also like I said, we we don't want to break his heart, okay? We love him and we and that, and that causes us to fear him, okay? We know how to fear him. And it tells us that that's where your will some star said okay that's where your, your knowledge comes from so okay and it starts all about fearing God and it's not like okay I fear God's wrath this and that yes I fear his wrath but it, it's much deeper than that it's about the relationship okay it's almost like if you and your, a relationship between you and your best friend in the natural you know you respect that person and, and you don't want to break this person hard and you just want to love them and you just want to care for them because you know what they have done for you okay so fearlessness okay number eight Okay, um, I'm going to cut it off at number 9 or 10 because there's so much more, and I'm going to do a part 2. Um, I'm going to finish out the rest of it on part 2, and then I'm going to go into something different. Okay, um, it's a lot of it though, cause I'm telling you, it's all about being obedient to. You know, we can we uh, prophets love to be obedient to God. You know, and being obedient to the Lord comes from also the the fearlessness of Him, being able to fear Him. We want to be obedient to Him too. Um, so. That's another thing, but I'm going to give you eight and nine, and then I'm going to uh, cut it off from there, okay? So, number eight, we trust God. We trust God. Regardless of what, we trust God, okay? I don't care what we're going through. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how bad it has gotten. We could have lost 
everything. There have been times where I have lost extremely everything, but throughout the whole time, we I trust God. I trust who He is. I am a firm believer. Um, I love. I know His truth. I believe in His strength. I believe in who He say He is. Okay, we just trust God all the way around. And the reason being is because we know God. We have seen Him. We have spent time with Him. We know His mind. We know His heart, and we trust Him. And I'm gonna tell y'all this because the Holy Ghost gave it to me this morning while I was uh while I was in prayer as I was walking and listening to his voice. This thing that I got going on with me, okay, in my chest. Now my my, my bestie, our sister uh Trinity, she's on here. I was just listening to her about this. Okay. Now they told me that I have a tumor in my chest, a size six millimeter, uh size six millimeter, okay. And um of course, the aneurysm, all that stuff, okay? Um, and then, not just that, but I was looking at my blood work, and I finally got my test results for my blood work, and this, this is a certain type of blood uh, test they take that, that checks for different things like blood calls, cancer, uh, um, any other type of um, disease or things like that. And so, God brought it back to my attention, Okay, he brought me to my attention. He spoke to something to me years ago when I was new in my spirit. And I never forget because I, I was living with my aunt and um, she has this corner store at her house. And I used to walk back and forth to the store every day, you know, because I love my sweets and things. So I used to walk back and forth to the store every single day. And at this time, that's when I, like I said, I was very fresh in my uh, spirit and in my walk with God. You know, I was just coming back into his, uh, the knowledge of him and things like that. So God was still uh, stripping me. He was still stripping me from the way I dressed, the way I talked, my anger. You know, he was still crushing me and stripping me. So one day I was, I was walking and I literally heard in my spirit, uh, can I use your lung cancer as a testimony? And I was like, hmm? You know, and uh, he said, lung cancer is going to come up. But it's okay because I'm going to heal you. But I have to put you through some things because I want to use you. I want to use your testimony to bring other people out. And I want to use you in the department and the anointing for healing and deliverance. So uh, all I need from you is a yes. And I'm like, okay, sure. You know, I ain't going to lie. At, time, at, the, at the time, I was like, am I really hearing from God? Because I'm like, I don't know. Could God ask me something like this? You know, will God do this? Because like I said, I was, I was fresh in my uh, spirit. I was new to hearing God's voice, so I wasn't really sure. But because... I felt like if this was God, I trust him in his word. And I know he's Jehovah Rapha. And I know the things that he say he would do. And I know that his promises are yes and amen. And I know that he said if, he deliver, if he's going to deliver me, then he's going to deliver me. So because, even though I wasn't sure, because I had the feeling that yes, this was God, then I said, yes, Lord, you have my yes. You have my yes. I would give it to you whatever you want to do, however you want to use me, whatever you want to put me through, um, wherever I have to go through to be used if I gotta put through the fire if I gotta be put through anything then here's my yes I'm giving you a true yes from my heart you can use me and it was never spoke of again okay never from that point and that was years back so this morning as God was speaking to me he brought it to my attention okay and so, you know, it's all about trusting God. It's all about trusting God and knowing who he is. It's all about knowing that his promises are going to come through. That if he say he's going to do it, he's going to do it. You just got to trust him regardless of what, okay? And so, that's how we are as true prophets. We are, we are firm believers. We trust him and we trust his word, you know, and, and we allow him. And, and that kind of takes me back also. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That takes me back to what I said in the beginning of the video that many people want to be a prophet and they are asking for it, but they have no idea what they are asking for because prophets we have we are good we are anointed for healing we are anointed for deliverance we are anointed to be able to break chains off of people we are anointed to be able to bring people out of strongholds we are anointed to tear down the kingdom of 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 um of darkness you know we are anointed to pull down principalities but how do we get 
get anointed, you have to go through the process before you become anointed. You have to go through the trouble before you come out on the other side. Before you become anointed, before you can get the oil, before you can get on that level, you have to go through it. Like I tell people all the time, I didn't understand why I was such a sick child. I didn't know why I was born with an immature lung. I didn't know why I had to, I couldn't go to school for days at a time or months at a time because I was constantly in the hospital for my asthma or, you know, I don't know why I had such a hard pregnancy every time I had a child. I don't know why I went through all this. It wasn't until I knew who I was in God. And it wasn't until I knew who God called me to be and what he called me to do that I realized, okay, I had to go through that in order to conquer it and come out on the other side so I could say, hey, let me tell you what God did for me. Okay, let me go to this, let me be able to go to this person and say, hey, let me tell you how God saved my life. Okay, yeah, I understand that you're a diabetic, but it's not over with, because let me tell you how God healed me. Like, I understand that you can't hardly breathe that knock of your asthma is tearing you apart, but let me tell you how long it's been since I used my inhaler, because God healed me. And that happened to me before, and that's when I woke up, okay, in my spirit, and I was like, whoa, okay. Um, it was this one time where... I was just starting to do lives in another group, and somebody contacted me um, out, uh, afterwards, like a day or two afterwards, and they was telling me about all these different um, diseases and things that they had and all these things they went through, and I told them my story. All we did was talk, you guys, and that's another thing. Prophets are anointed to heal you just by talking. You know, it's not all about laying hands and this and that. We can just talk to you and allow the Holy Ghost to use us through the words, and you can be healed from that, and you can be set free from that. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, I was talking to this lady and I told her every single thing that I had from my youth all the way up to a certain point. And no lie, not only did this lady break down and cry and tell me, told me that she felt God's presence on the phone. But she gave her life to God that night, okay? She gave her life to God, and she said, I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to start speaking my healing, and I'm going to start decreeing. And I'm telling you, I felt the Holy Ghost, and that lady got filled with the Holy Spirit that night. I heard God. I was like, he was instructing me through it. That was my first time ever going through that, and God instructed me. The Holy Spirit said, tell her that she's getting ready to feel fire. And I told her, and remind you, I'm freaking now, because it's the first time that I ever felt it's like I'm shaking that I'm on fire and my whole body feel like somebody just poured a bucket of scarlet water on me and this and that. So I'm on fire and I'm sweating and, and she's crying and she's crying out to God and giving her life over to him. Right. OK, so. Um, and the Holy Spirit was like, well, tell her um, the fire that she's feeling. That's me. Tell her, let me in. Let her, tell her to let me in, and she would be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I told her, and that lady got filled with the Holy Ghost that night, okay? And so at that moment, I realized that God put me through so many things because he was going to have to use that one day. Okay, he had to put me through because it's one thing to talk. You know, it's one thing to, if you don't, if, I'm going to put it like this, and we all know it's true. I know I said I was going to hold y'all along, but the Holy Ghost put this in my spirit to talk about this because um, I don't know if somebody needs to hear this or what. But we said all the time, it is hard for us to understand what a person is going through if we've never been through it. It is extremely hard for you to understand what a person is going through if you've never been through it. So how can you help somebody come out of something that you've never been through? So, yes, whenever God has anointed you for a certain, a, certain, uh, uh, a certain thing and has anointed you in a certain way, then, yes, you're going to have to go through those things first. Because not only is it going to be the anointed that's speaking through you, but it's also going to be the experience. So you're going to be able to take the anointed and the experience and you're going to be able to put it together. And it's going to be a force. That's going to help somebody come out of their bondage. That's going to help somebody have faith in God that, hey, if he did it for you, he can do it for them. Okay, so that goes back to trusting God um, with, what, what, with what's going on with me, okay? Because I heard him spoke that years ago. And here it is years later, and these things coming up on me. And I'm like, what's going on? And when God brought that back up to me, I'm saying, you know what, Lord? 
Whatever you got to do, I'm not going to ask you to save me from this process because I'm scared I may be speaking against your will. I'm scared that I may be hindering the Holy Spirit because this may be something that you want to use later on down the line. So therefore, God, if this is part of your will, then I am willing to accept the results and I am willing to, to trust you, Lord, through the process to know that you already spoken to me, that you was going to heal me and that I was going to come out stronger and better and that I was going to be very anointed behind this and that you are going to use my story to bring somebody else out. So God, is this what you want, God, of this part of the process? Then I'm not going to ask you to take it from me, God, but I'm going to ask you to give me strength to go through it and I'm going to trust you while I'm going through it because I want to be able to be used in the future. I want to be able to heal and deliver somebody from these same things that I went through. I want to be able to tell them about you and to show them how you saved me and you can save them too. Okay, so and that's another thing. Like I said, I wasn't trying to go that deep in it, but um, the Lord, he brought it to me. So that's all about trusting God, and it's all about going through some things too, okay? So number nine, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to hold y'all too long. But number nine is prayer at heart. We are prayer at heart, okay? We are not double-minded. Okay, that's another thing. We're not double-minded. But we're not, I mean, but we are prayer at heart. Okay, we are uncontaminated. We are very clear. We are unblended. We are uncorrupted. Okay, and that's why, that's another thing. Okay, whenever a person, whenever a false prophet is speaking, um, Whenever a false prophet is speaking something that God didn't give them, or whenever they are illegally tapping into the spirit realm, their words are contaminated. Okay? Their words are contaminated. Even if... Okay, say for instance... I'm going to use this. Say for instance, even if God did speak something to them, but if they are standing to you with the wrong intentions, and if they have the wrong motive, then their word is contaminated. If they become very prideful and arrogant with it, then their words are contaminated. Even if God spoke something to them, but they tell you that they're not going to release what God has for you until you sow a seed, then their word eventually at that point becomes contaminated because they're going against what God say. They're going against what they're going against the Bible and they're going against God with it because it's not how it works when it comes to the word of the Lord. So even if God was to have spoken something to them, if they go against anything that goes against the, if they do anything that goes against the word of God, then that word has that word has become a contaminated, and you don't want to receive a contaminated word. You don't want to receive anything from somebody that has the wrong intentions against you or the wrong motive against anybody. And the wrong motive don't necessarily mean like they 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 curse you or you know they have an agenda after you know. Like I said, the the wrong motive can be oh they try to make you sow a seed. They're asking for money. Oh, if this word bless you, please sow a seed. If it bless you, then if it bless that person, then you should be glorified, God. If anybody wants to come tell me that. What I spoke to them blessed them. Or if anybody was to come tell me that the word that I gave them came to pass, then I'm glorifying God. Because it was not my word, it was God's word. I'm just a vessel that I allow him to use. You know, and I don't say allow, but I'm the vessel that I want him to use. I'm not gonna say allow, but I want him to use me. So I'm not gonna be like getting all prideful and arrogant about it. I'm not gonna try to break the internet telling every single body. I'm not even going to ask you for no money. Okay, so we have to be careful with those things, you guys. We have to look at that. We have to be careful with how, uh, you know, whenever, you know, just please take this information with you. Take it with you the next time you're around somebody. You know what I'm saying? Even, even me. You know, I tell people, even me. Evaluate me. If you see that I'm starting to get out of character, then tell me I'm getting out of character so I can get my butt back in character. Okay, like I tell people all the time, I want to stay right with God. I want to be right with him. So if you see me doing anything that's starting to get out of character, I may not recognize that I'm doing it. So I need you to tell me, hey, sis, you're you, you starting to get out of character. Something is not right. You, you need to get back in the will of God. You need to go repent. You, you know, you're not, you're not being right. Okay, so we have to look at that. We have to look at that. And everything I tell people all the time, everything that a person tells you, whether they an apostle, a pastor, a preacher, if they're prophetic, if they're a prophet, I mean, whatever. 
Whatever they tell you, go seek God for yourself about that. If I give you a word, go and seek God about that word. Go and pray and be like, God, okay, you know, so-and-so gave me this word, and I just want to pray it back to you, and I just want to know your thoughts on it. You know, God, did you really say this, or, you know, uh, is this truly your word? Go back. Go back, and, I'm, and the reason why I say that, not saying, oh, we're, uh, you know, we're, you know, the word I speak may not be right or anything like that. No, because we are around so many spirits all day. And that's another thing. We are around so many different spirits all day. And I may be picking up somebody else's spirit while I'm talking to you. And sometimes it can be mixed up. So that's another thing we have to be careful with. So that's why we need to go back to God and say, okay, you know what, God? Uh, you know, uh, 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 is this person false? You know, ask God, <clears throat> did you send this person to tell me that? Is they false? Or if they really truly are from you, God, is the word they spoke to me right? Because you never know. Words can get mixed up too because you, we feel so many different spirits all the time around us. You know, I done had people that then got my word mixed up with my spiritual sister. And, uh, and she done had people that got uh, her word mixed up with mine because we're, me and her are so close in the spirit to where... You know, people sometimes get our stuff mixed up. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. But I always, you know what I'm saying, go back to God. So I'm going to read you a few more scriptures and then I'm going to let y'all go. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they see God. Okay, Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they see God. Okay, um, Psalms 12 and 6. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. Okay, so, you know, um, going to, 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 to take me back to what I just said. We go through a lot. God constantly taking us through the fire. He takes us through the fire to anoint us for certain things, but he also takes us through the fire to keep our, our hearts pure, you know, to make sure we stay humble because it is so easy for a prophet to start getting prideful and arrogant, okay? And I have been seeing a lot of that circulating around Facebook to where, you know, people are... Uh, it's almost like they're kind of excited that the coronavirus happened. I'm going to be real with you, okay? And this is just my word. It's not coming from God. I'm just going to be honest. It's almost like they're kind of excited that the coronavirus ha uh, happened because it's like they're saying, See, I told y'all. I prophesied that to y'all. I told you it was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like they always, like, it's almost like they're trying to prove a point, you know, uh, saying that. You know, it's like they're getting prideful and they're getting arrogant about the whole thing because they're like, now people can finally see that I'm a real prophet because I prophesied that and now the thing happened and now I can I can, ref I can refresh their memory. I can tell, no, calm down, honey. If you prophesied anything that came to pass, that's because it was God speaking through you because it's his word, it's his gift. And his word never returned to him void or nor hit the ground. It's going to come to pass. It's not your word. Your words will hit the ground. Okay? The words from Satan would hit the ground. But the word of the Lord would never hit the ground. So if it came to pass, why are you uh, exalting yourself? Okay? You need to come off that high horse and exalt God because it's his word. Okay? So, um, true prophets, we are pure heart. Okay? We are pure heart. And um, like I said, we are obedient. Okay, I'm um, gonna get uh, deeper into that. We are very obedient to the voice of God, regardless. You know, there are times where I had to speak things to my family members, and I was so scared and nervous, like, I don't know if they're gonna accept it. And I actually did it through a text one day, I'm not gonna lie, because I was so scared and nervous. Um, because we know we already know that prophets are rejecting their own hometown anyway, okay? Um, and then this is my family, okay? They know me, and so I wasn't sure. So I did it through a text message. Never heard anything else about it, you know. Um, never got a response, but I did it because we are obedient. No matter who that person is, God telling us to speak to. If he tell us to do something, you know, regardless of what. Sometimes we wrestle with that obedience because of the shy part and because of the nervousness that we have in us. But at the end of the day, we're going to be obedient to God because we fear God, okay? So you can see how all this stuff ties in together with the characteristics of a true prophet. One is not going to work without the other, okay? All of it comes together. We're going to have all of these things in us, okay? We exercise discretion and strong discernment, okay? Um, that's another thing. Like I said, if you watched the video this morning, if not, go back and watch the replay. Uh, when I was saying how God wants us to go deeper and get stronger in our discernment, okay? God wants us to a point where we can, our discernment is so high to where a person can be thousands of miles away from us and we can know what they're thinking. 
in the spirit realm, okay? Okay, if a person has the wrong uh, motive against us, if a person is trying to come up against us, if a person is plotting against us, then uh, God wants our discernment to be so strong to where we don't even have to be in the same room as you and we can feel it in the spirit that you're up to no good towards us so that we'll be able to block it out and so we can fight against it and war against it. Not to admit, not to mention that uh, also that he want us to have strong discernment for um, for people when it comes to them being in trouble, so we can intercede for them. You know, he want us to have a strong discernment for for people that may be weak in their spirit, who may be uh, sick, even if they're getting ready to to fall. You know, if somebody that's a believer that's uh, in Christ, if they begin to fall or or to a weakness or to temptation. Well, he want us to be able to know that, okay? He want us to be able to say, pick up that phone call and say, hey, I felt in the spirit. You feel a mess up, sis. You feel a mess up, brother. I need you to quit. I need you to get back in your word. I need you to fall on your knees and pray. So he, we have strong discernments, okay? So we can feel those things in the spirit realm, okay? So... Um, I, 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 I am somewhat on that level. I used to be on that level, on that level. But as I explained this morning, um, on the live is that we, some, most of us have gotten to a place where our flesh has become stronger than our spirit. And with that being done, it kind of crushes our discernment, okay? Because we discern through the Holy Ghost, okay? See, the, the discernment is another, uh, gift, um, a form of gift that comes from the Holy Spirit. So, if our flesh is stronger than our our spirit, then it's going to be hard for us to uh, dig deep into our discernment, okay? So, we have to make sure that our spirit, man, is stronger than our flesh, okay? So, um, like I said, discernment, um, having... Uh, no agenda but God's agenda. Wherever God say, that's all we worry about is God's will, okay? Obedient. Um, we are good listeners. Anybody know me, I will listen to you until I fall asleep on the phone with you. If you want me to talk to you, um, I have a few people on here uh, that will come on here that's in the group has talking to me personally over the phone, and they know I will sit there and listen to them all day long. Just talk to me, please. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to uh, talk to you in any kind of way. I'm not going to rush you up the phone if you want to talk i'm here i'm going to talk to you okay and the only time you may see me rumbling or uh, ranting on and running my mouth is if god has given me something for you and i will tell you okay so uh we have a lot of wisdom my wisdom come from god um uh, and so forth so forth so like i said it's so much and all these things i just read i am going to um teach on this tomorrow if y'all would please tune in if you would like to um Cause I really want y'all to get this, okay? I want y'all to have this. Cause like I said, in this hour, in this time, we got so many false prophets rising up. We got so many false prophets. That's, I mean, we got so many false prophets rising, but we also have so many prophets that's getting ready to fall to destruction because they have allowed their pride to show so badly because of this coronavirus and. You know, we have a lot of them that we can tell that they really didn't have a real relationship with God, you know, and it's showing in this time. We got a lot of them. They're really not even prophets. God has anointed them and called them to be evangelists and teachers and pastors and stuff like that. But just because they can prophesy a little bit with the spirit of prophecy, they are calling themselves a prophet. And that's why I read y'all that introduction first before I got deep into this because people need to be careful when they're asking for being a prophet, okay? Because you don't want them problems, okay? You don't want to see death all the time because I see death a lot. I feel bad spirits. I can see shadows of, of, of spirits on the wall. I can tell when somebody's in trouble. Like, um, I had somebody that was going through a, a time where they were battling demons, and I knew it because I seen it because it woke me up out of my sleep every night for, at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so I have to go through so many things uh, with rejection. I had to go through so many things that God had to put me through to keep me humbled. Okay, because like I said, pro pro prophets can get very arrogant sometimes. So God has to keep us humble. You know, we, we don't have a lot of friends. You know, we can't keep friends for nothing to wear. And God has us like that because he wants us to be in isolation more than he wants us to be popular. Because it's in that isolation where we feel God's glory and we can hear his voice to know what he's doing in the world. Okay. Um, like I said, so you don't want to be there. Okay. We go through a lot of sickness because God has, has anointed us for healing and deliverance. So we go through a lot of that. <laughs> 
and prophets are hated. True prophets are hated, okay? And that's the number one thing that I want y'all to, to put in your hearts. True prophets are not liked. I'm not going to say that people hate them, hate them, but true prophets are not liked because when we come, we're coming to warn, okay? We will give you a word of knowledge. We will speak something good to you, and we will give you a word of wisdom. But a lot of times, that's coming with, re with uh, rebuke. It's coming with uh, correction, and it's coming with... Uh, and it's coming to warn you, okay? Because uh, a lot of times when God sends a prophet, most of the time when God sends a prophet, it's because you're not listening to him. You're not listening to the warning signs. You're not trying to hear him. You're turning your back on him. You have turned your ear on him. You have not taken heed to him. You have not uh, opened up your heart to him. So therefore, he's going to send his prophet. And when his prophet come, and if they're coming with a warning, then they're coming with fire, okay, to burn it out of you. So... Um, like I said, you don't really want a prophet coming to you. A lot of people, they seek prophets all the time. Oh, I want a word. And I'm jumping on every live I see because they're prophesying. Yeah, they're prophet lying to you. They're not trying to save your soul. They don't care about your soul. They just want a prophet lie to get their views up and to get their followers and to get your money, okay? And then they're going by their business and they're probably sitting behind closed doors, okay? You don't know what the half of these folks are doing. There have been plenty of times I got on people's lives and God has shown me their true spirit. He has shown me what they really do behind closed doors, okay? Like I said, people can pretend well, okay? They can pretend very well, but what are they doing behind closed doors in their personal time? Anybody that knows me personally can tell you that in my personal time, I'm doing the same exact thing I'm doing to y'all now. Doing with y'all now. I'm reading the word. I'm spending time with my children. I'm on my face before the Lord, and I'm by myself, okay? I ain't got time to be trying to have, uh, be in sexual immorality or dealing with any type of sexual immorality, whether it's uh, uh, <laughs> lust, porn, anything like that. I ain't got time to be cussing nobody out. I don't have time to be in nobody's club. I don't have time to be on the street acting a fool, being all dramafied. I don't have time for none of that, okay? So a lot of these people, you don't know what they're doing behind closed doors, okay? They could be prophesying to you now, and then tonight they can be in somebody's club somewhere on the street. Part, okay, we don't know that, so we better be careful because the gift comes without repentance. Okay, remember that the gift comes without repentance, so they can have the gift and they can prophesy to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're living the life of God, that doesn't necessarily mean that they allow God to be their main source of information, and that doesn't mean that they truly care about you. Okay, so like I said, I have it here on my wall. I don't know if y'all can see it, it's right here. Oh, wait a minute, wrong side. Sorry, yep, hold on. I'm trying to see. Oh, there you go. It's right there. I have my scriptures on the wall. And that one right there I'm pointing to is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, okay? So, if you have to, you write down. You can write down the characteristics and you can post them and you can put them on your wall or in your folder or your notes. And you can um, get the fruit of the Holy Spirit and you can post that also. Or write it down, and I recommend you do because, like I said, take the fruit of the Holy Spirit and take the characteristics and their lifestyles, and you put it together. If something is not lining up with these people, then I suggest that you be careful listening to them, because once again, Jeremiah fourteen sixteen say, okay, that and these people to whom they have been preaching will end up as corpses. You will end up dead. You will end up in hell, in the pit of fire, listening to these people. Because they are not trying to save your soul. They are not trying to, uh, they, don't, they don't care about where you go. They don't care about you at all. They are leading you right to hell, prophesying lies and deceiving you, okay? So, we don't want to be the very elite that's deceiving this moment, okay? So, that's why God has me teaching on this. Because, like I said, um... In this hour, in this day, with everything going on, there are so many false prophets rising up. And like I said, I have seen it. There, has, there are people that I was following, okay, um, because I know for a fact they were genuine. But when this pandemic happened, they showed me that they really are prideful. They lady went to their head because, oh, I prophesied. And now I'm going to tell the entire world. And, oh, my gosh, somebody recognized me. They recognized that I prophesied this. And, and now they're sharing. And, oh, my gosh, I'm going to do you're getting arrogant, okay? You're getting arrogant. Glorify God. And if God is allowing you to be shown to the world because he wants to reveal you, then let him be the one to do the promotion. You don't promote yourself. God does the promotion. He's the one reveals the true you. He's the one that sets you in front of everybody. 
to glorify his name okay so remain humble okay remain humble and make sure that you glorify god everything that we do taste drink say in this world is to glorify the lord so be blessed you guys i love you and i really hope that this blesses you and i really hope that you learned something new today and I will talk to you later. Part two coming tomorrow. Part two tomorrow. And the second part of fast tomorrow, okay? And I'm going to post some prayer points for tomorrow's fast later on today, okay? Love you. Be best. And once again, back to the cross, you guys. Get back to God.